Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a otra such class. Soy Mr. Castrillon. Welcome to another lesson uh, with me, Mr. Castrillon, and today we're going to be talking about parts of the body. And the title of our uh, session today is Me duele. This is a very interesting verb to you learn today, uh, mainly because of the way how we use it and mainly because of the way how we conjugate it. Um, it's actually simple to use, but there are a couple of things that we need to be very careful, and you are going to be learning those two things throughout the lesson. Let's have a look at our uh, objectives today. Hoy vamos a repasar las partes del cuerpo. Vamos a aprender el verbo doler. Y vamos a decir qué parte del cuerpo nos duele. I hope you can see lots of new words here. So we have cuerpo, cuerpo, that means body. And then we have doler, doler, which means uh, ache or something that uh, is sore. Now, this is why this lesson is a slightly tricky because in Spanish, the way how we express pain is slightly different from the way how you do it in English. Uh, mainly because, uh, say for instance, when you say my head is sore, we actually use a verb and then the body part, but you're going to be learning that today. So first of all, of course, very likely we'll have someone who's going to ask us, ¿Qué te pasa? ¿Qué te pasa? What's the matter? What's wrong with you? And we can say, me duele, me duelen. Now, this is very important because uh, we have two ways to use the verb doler. And we are going to learn those two ways today. So before we start talking about what actually is sore in our bodies, we need to learn those body parts. Las partes del cuerpo. I would repeat that for you. Las partes del cuerpo. So we have... La cabeza. So as you can see, it's the whole head. La cabeza. Remember, you can say this cabeza or cabeza. Doesn't matter. It depends on what you'd, your accent uh, you'd like your, your accent to be like. I am South American, so we say la cabeza. La frente. El Pelo. And I want you to also be aware that we have masculine and feminine. And anything with la is going to be feminine. Anything with l is going to be masculine. Why is this important? Because sometimes we want to say um, yellow hair, or we want to say black hair, or brown hair. And we need to do our uh, two words match. La ceja. El ojo, la oreja, la boca, las muelas, la barba, la barbilla, la garganta, el cuello, el bigote, la mejilla. So I'm going to repeat each one of those words so you know the pronunciation of them. La frente, forehead. El pelo, hair, la ceja, eyebrow, el ojo, the eye, el ojo, remember how to pronounce that, la oreja, the ear, la boca, mouth, las muelas, teeth, la barba, beard, la barbilla, chin, la garganta, the throat, el cuello, neck, el bigote, mustache, la mejilla, cheek. Right, so we have our body parts there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different people with different body parts. And what I would like you to do is I want you to take note and match the pictures to the words. I'll give you two minutes for that. Go for it.
one minute left. Okay, el tiempo se acabó. Time is up. So let's have a look and see where you are able to, or you were able to identify the different body parts. So, la frente. H, la frente. La cabeza. C, of course, C. El cuello. L, very good. La barbilla is J. J, la barbilla. La mejilla. K, it's right there. La garganta. G. Las muelas. A. La oreja. F. El ojo. D, el ojo. El pelo. B. La boca. E. It's right here. E. And finally, la ceja. I. Great. Now, we've spoken about the head and everything that is kind of part of the head, like eyes, ears, eyebrows, and so on. Mouth, nose. But what about other parts of the body? In this case, we have the full body, and this is a very famous character in Spain called Don Quixote. So what I would like you to do is I want you to take notes of each one of the body parts of Don Quixote. La cabeza, once again, then el hombro, el codo, the elbow, el brazo, the arm. El hombro is the shoulder. La muñeca, the wrist. El estómago, stomach. La mano, the hand. El dedo, fingers. La rodilla. La pierna. El tobillo, el pie. Now, many people actually have every now and again a sore back. La espalda. So I'm going to repeat each one of these words. El hombro, el codo, la muñeca, la mano, la rodilla, el tobillo, el pie, la cabeza, el brazo, el estómago, el dedo, la pierna, la espalda. So take note of each one of these body parts so we know how to say those ones in Spanish later on today. Now, Doler. Doler se forma como gustar en español. When we are going to use doler, we are going to do the same as what we do with gustar. Can you remember gustar? Well, gustar means to like. So when you want to say I like something, you usually say me gusta. So that same structure or similar structure is the one we are going to use for doler. Me duele la garganta. I have got a sore throat. Me duele la cabeza. I've got a headache. Plural. Now, notice that each one of these two parts that I mentioned, throat, head, is singular because we only have one. But what happens when we're talking about plural parts of the body? Like, for instance, teeth. Well, we need to add N after duele. Me duelen las muelas. Why is this the case? Because muelas is in plural. 
and we need to make good balance of the verb and the body part, in this case, teeth. And therefore, we need to include the N at the end because it is a plural uh, noun. It, it, that means I have got a toothache. Now, doler is an ER verb, ER, sorry, ER verb, and of course, it's going to have a slight change on that O. So, have a look at this. Me duele, te duele, le duele, nos duelen, os duele, les duele. Now, that is a conjugation for doler in Spanish. That literally means my part of the body is sore or is uh, or aches. So, for instance, te is you. So, if I ask you, que te duele, I'm asking you, what is sore on you or what are you suffering of? It's a really tricky one to translate. So, always, always be very careful with it. Nos duelen is us. Nos duelen los pies. Our feet are sore, maybe because we were walking too much and I was with my friends. So, that makes sense. Os duele. Now, that is when you're talking to a group of people and you're being polite. You. Les duele means them. So you're saying, oh, their feet are sore, for instance. Les duelen los pies. Or les duele la cabeza. Their head is sore. And maybe there are two, three people who all of them have a sore head. Now, can you actually remember what I've just said. So I'm going to put this again. And what I would like you to do is fill in the gaps and I'm going to give you two minutes to write down this very short paragraph and then fill in the gaps that we are missing. Two minutes for that. Off you go. One more minute. I'm back. So let's see how you got with this exercise today, how you did with it. So the first one is gustar. Doler se forma como gustar en español. Me duele la garganta. I have got a sore throat. Me duele la cabeza. I have got a headache. Plural. Me duelen las muelas, which means I have got a toothache. Finally, with doler, let's have a look and see what we actually use to fill in these gaps. Me duelen, te duelen, 
le duelen, nos duelen, os duelen, les duelen. You get it right? Very well done. If you didn't, just come back to the video, practice again. Always remember to, uh, to visit our website and then you are going to be able to see all of these lessons and you can repeat the lesson, you can pause the lesson, you can take pictures of the lesson and of course of the uh, actual PowerPoint. And then of course you can use all of this information when you have your lessons at, at school. Right, so here we go. We have Mr. Quixote, Don Quixote, and he has so many parts that are very sore. Can you match the number, the sore part? I'm going to give you one minute for that. Off you go. I'm back. Let's have a look and see how these sentences match with our Don Quixote's picture. So let's see. Me duele la pierna. Can you guess which one that is? Number six. Me duele la pierna. My leg is sore. Me duele la garganta. Me duele la garganta. Number two. My throat is sore. Me duele la mano, me duele la cabeza, me duele el estómago y finalmente me duele el brazo. Number three. Very well done. Okay, let's have a look and see what happens here. So now we have all the plural parts. So, say for instance, feet, hands, eyes, legs, and ears. Number one would be, sorry, number five is me duelen los pies, me duelen las manos, me duelen los ojos, me duelen las piernas, and finally, me duelen las orejas. Now, what I would like you to do is I want you to, I want you to have a look at this uh, picture of Don Quixote, and I'm going to give you two minutes to try and write as many sentences with me duele, me duelen. Remember, singular, plural, and the challenge is left or right. How do you say that in Spanish? Like right arm or left arm or right hand. Okay, two minutes, off you go. Well, I hope you've managed to actually complete this exercise. I'm running out of time here. But what I would like to show you is the answers to this. So here we go. Me duele la cabeza. Me duelen los ojos, plural. Me duele el cuello. Me duelen los hombros. Me duele el brazo. Me duele el estómago. Me duele la mano. Me duele el dedo. Me duelen las rodillas. Me duele la pierna, me duele el tobillo y finalmente me duelen los pies. Muy bien. So today you revised different body parts and you learned the verb doler and how to conjugate it in simple present. You also wrote sentences saying what part of your body was in pain. Remember to practice, come back to the lesson, go over it, take notes of it, take pictures with your phone, and of course, go back to school and ask your teacher how you can improve these sentences. I say, for instance, my right arm hurts, and how you'd say that in English. 
sorry, in Spanish. In the meantime, I wish you the very best, muchos éxitos, and I hope I can see you very soon. Hasta pronto.